Further debate? The member for Guelph. Can't resist the opportunity to get uh, debate the Get It Done Wrong Act. And let me tell you why it's getting it done wrong, Speaker. This, this act is going to make the affordability crisis worse, and it's going to make the climate crisis worse. And let's start with the way this bill is imposing expensive sprawl onto communities in this province. Speaker, it takes two and a half times more money to service sprawl and to build the infrastructure for sprawl than it does to actually get it done building homes in the people can afford in the communities they know and love. So this government, first of all, they imposed sprawl on municipalities. Then they said, no, we're going to backtrack on that and not impose sprawl on municipalities. And now they're going to backtrack on the backtrack to impose sprawl on municipalities once again through enforced boundary expansions in this act. Now, it would be so much cheaper for people, for municipalities, for government, for all of us, if the government would just simply legalize housing. Say yes to fourplexes and four-story as of right across the province so we can build homes that people can afford in the communities they love. If they would legalize building missing middle housing, six to 11 stories along major transit and transportation corridors, we could actually build homes that people can afford and municipalities could actually afford to build the servicing for those homes. But instead, the government has been focusing their time, money, and attention on sprawl that is there to benefit speculators and not people. So we're going to be looking at property tax increases all across the province. We're seeing it municipalities everywhere in Ontario having to jack up property taxes to primarily line the pockets of speculators who are going to be the primary beneficiaries of the sprawl agenda. So why is that going to make the climate crisis worse? Well, it's going to pave over our farms, forests, and wetlands. The, the very lands that feed us, the lands that protect us from the escalating costs of climate-fueled extreme weather events. So then, the government in this Get It Done Wrong Act basically did something I didn't think the government could do, Speaker. They're actually going to even make the Environmental Assessment Act worse. Why are they going to make the Environmental Assessment Act worse? So they can speed up the construction of Highway 413, the $10 billion boondoggle that will save people 60 seconds. When we have a highway just a few kilometers south of there that's underutilized, underused, that we could actually divert truck traffic onto, again, saving, saving taxpayers money. Saving taxpayers money. I, well, well, no, I mean, that's fine. If the NDP put tolls on it in the past, we're talking about how do we get truckers off of the 401, onto the 407, so we can save taxpayers money, and we can speed up commute times right now. This could be done tomorrow. Don't have to wait 10 years. It could be done tomorrow. Far cheaper for taxpayers, better for the economy, better for the climate. It won't pave over 2,000 acres of farmland, unleashing sprawl onto even more prime farmland, pave over 400 acres of the Greenbelt, and traverse 85 waterways, putting our waterways at risk. So the government had an opportunity to avoid all these costs, all this destruction, and actually say, well, get rid of tolls on the one highway Order. there are actually tolls on, instead of talking about some mythical highway somewhere in the future. Speaker, where else is it going to make the climate and affordability crisis worse? Well, if the government was serious about actually having a plan to address the climate crisis and set Ontario up for success in the emerging climate economy, they could actually take over the federal carbon pricing mechanism, up the rebate, and the premier could write checks to people. 
as part of their rebate. But instead, the government wants to take our rebate away from us and disincentivize economic activity to lead to decarbonization, where $1.8 trillion was invested last year globally. We could be attracting that investment in Ontario, reducing climate pollution, creating jobs, and putting more money in people's pockets by raising rebate checks. Speaker, I want to conclude with this whole license plate scheme. I was the only MPP in the House, I'll proudly say this, the only MPP in the House that got up and made it clear that I voted against this whole license plate scheme. Passed on a voice vote, I got up and said, hey, I'm the one person opposed to it. You know why I'm opposed to it, Speaker? It cost us $2 billion in the first year, $1.5 billion each and every year. So when people talk about not having money for health care, not having money for education, not having money for housing affordability, there's where we could find money. But Thank the you. government has taken it away from us. Thank you. We're going to go to questions for the member of Guelph, the member for Brampton North. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. And I, I, I guess there you have it, Madam Speaker. We heard the member for Guelph say uh, that he actually likes taxes and actually doesn't believe that Ontarians are taxed enough. He actually wants to tax them more. So we should pay taxes on our license plate stickers. We should uh, pay an increased carbon tax. Um, you know, I, I think of the song Tax Man by the Beatles, right? I mean, you know, I, uh, I'm not quite old enough uh, to be there when it came out, but you know, if, if you, you take a walk, he'll tax the street, right? You get too cold, he'll tax the heat. I mean, it is ridiculous uh, to, to drive, to, to heat your home, to buy groceries. You know, out of control ideological governments have made everything more expensive. And now, the federal government on April 1st will actually be increasing the carbon tax, believe it or not, in this affordability Question. crisis that we have. I guess. Uh, if there was a referendum on increasing the car carbon tax on April 1st, uh, would the member vote yes or no, or does he think they should increase Thank it you. even further than they're already the doing? Member for Guelph to respond. Speaker, what I don't want, I don't want my children to wait 16 hours in an emergency department when they need access to medical care. I don't want my parents and grandparents to not be able to access long-term care or be able to age at home with proper home care. What I don't want are our downtown businesses being hurt because the intersecting crisis of poverty, homelessness, mental health and addictions is leading to tent cities, literally in our downtowns and across communities across the province. The government has a role to play in making life better and more affordable for people to ensure that people have access to the care and um, services they need. And we can do that if we Spons say things like, yeah, I'll pay $120 for my license sticker because I know it's gonna raise $1.5 billion to make my community a better, more caring Thank place. you. Next question, the member for Umber River Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I wanna thank the, uh, the member for his always eloquent speech. I wanted to ask a question of him. You know, when this was first debated at second reading, a government member got up and spoke that tolls weren't way, the way to go. It was actually gas tax that was the way to go. It was sensible. It was smart. A PC conservative Ford government member said that the gas tax was the way to go. In fact, he sits way over on that side, Speaker. I just wanted to ask what uh, the member thought about this conservative government uh, member talking about gas taxes being the way to go. Thank you. The member for Guelph. I appreciate the question. I was a little bit confused by it. I'm surprised that a conservative member would actually say to increase the gas tax, but maybe if they did, uh, that would be an interesting argument. But here, I'm going to say something as an electric vehicle driver. So one of the things I oftentimes hear from conservatives is, how are we going to pay for roads when all you folks start driving EVs and we no longer collect the gas tax from you because we're in EVs. Well, one of the ways that we can collect money to actually support the maintenance, safety, upkeep of our roads is to actually have a license sticker fee. 
that even electric vehicle drivers would pay for, that I would be happy to pay for, because we know that fuel taxes are going to go down as people switch to electric vehicles. We know that. So I just want to be honest with people about how we can pay for things in this Thank province. Thank you. We'll need to move to the next question. I recognize the member for Ottawa South. So, uh, speak, uh, Speaker, just a quick question. You know, I heard in the last debate we were talking about tolls, and you know, the government owns part of a road, and now they're saying we've got a, that they're charging tolls on, and they don't want to take them off. But now they're they're worried about breaking a contract. So the government that has broken so many contracts and gone in reverse so much on things like MZOs and the Green Belt and the Notwithstanding Clause and Green Energy, I, I don't really understand, Speaker, why the government is concerned over breaking contracts. Thank you. Member for Guelph for a quick response. I appreciate the member from Ottawa South question. I think they're concerned because they have such a poor legal record. They tend to lose <laughs> most of their legal cases. So I'm thinking they're probably worried they're going to lose the case. But here's the reality is we can pay for tolls for truckers for 30 years, for 30 years on the 407, and it won't even come in at half the cost of building Highway 413. Let's solve gridlock tomorrow by putting those truckers on the 407, saving us money. Thank you. Thank you. 